All right, thanks for staying with us now. There's flooding in the land and we're really concerned, right? Why wide areas of the state of Kogi are underwater after the Niger and Benue rivers broke their banks. Now, its, it's capital, Lokoja, is at the confluence of two of West Africa's biggest rivers, right? The River Benue and the River Niger. Now, during the raining season, the rivers overflow their banks, causing flooding. Now, according to a BBC report, local authorities say poor building practices are also partly to blame. Now, one of the factors why it's worse is that people continue to build in water plain areas, says um, Abdullahi Abubakar, the Red Cross acting secretary in Kogi state. So as soon as the flood subsides, people also go back to the same places and block water channels. Now, experts say there um, the causes of Nigeria's seasonal flooding are complex and include poor infrastructure and erosion but that climate change is adding also to this issue um, with further heavy rains forecast um, the situation in kogi state remains picastrous all right and the existing flood waters are not expected to recede for another month and the situation seems to be getting worse lives and properties have been destroyed and we really want to look into this situation and discuss a long-lasting solution hopefully Right, that's the conversation. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, uh, we have Mary. She's joined us. And Alera, I believe, has also joined us. Thank you so much, Mary. <laughs> Today was another day. All right, so let's quickly jump into this conversation, right, of the flooding. First of all, does this seem to you like we do not even care about what's going on in Nigeria? Because it took foreign um, reporters, foreign media houses mm -hmm. to talk about it. And now that started getting the attention. I don't even think it has gotten the attention of Nigerians. But quickly, what do you think is causing this flood in Lokoja? And because I really want to bring in our guest. Um, and from the news we're being told, I guess it's the Cameroon Dam. Okay. Which um, they overflow, I mean, they release to pour every 10 years. Because this, the same thing happened 10 years ago, which was about 2012 or so. Mm. And now we're seeing the same thing. Apparently, the year 2013, which was after that, the Cameroon government had informed Nigerian government, you know, we are supposed to also build a dam there as well. Or they are supposed to inform us when they're going to or flow the dam, maybe for us to have precautionary measures and stuff, but clearly none of that is done. The state governors are not saying anything, you know. I mean, it's like, why alone in mm. the This country. is where the man-made problems come in. Come in. <sighs> because what you're saying is that they ask for a collaboration between the yeah. two countries, that we have to do it from both sides. Yet we can just sort our side. We have to consider your side. So this is what we're planning to do. And we need you to follow through. And but again, Nigerians being Nigerians. <laughs> Let me bring Alero. Are you there? Because I want to bring in David. And I think David is also there. Yes. I, I mean, Alero. this is really disheartening. Yeah. I'm, 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 about 169 communities have been displaced. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's so scary that the houses, I mean, the flood is up to the roof. And I know that a lot of people cannot swim. Mm. A lot of people cannot swim, which means a lot of people have drowned. I mean, there was a video I saw online that a baby was floating on the river and a, a man saved the child. So I'm wondering how many people have actually died. Mm. And like you mentioned, this is an artificial um, um, disaster that was caused by maybe not be fixing good roads to allow you know the water system to flow and then the dam again. So this is really disheartening, and I'm really hoping that you know um, something actually um, comes out of this. I mean, positively, because I know a lot of people have. have started you know making noise about it to cause attention mm, thank you you know what is really hard for me to understand first of all we have problem with census we don't even know our numbers so now again there's a there's a disaster that has happened i am i can bet you As that the know. numbers are that are online they are giving a lot of actual it cannot ones. align with what has really actually happened so mm -hmm. we really do not know the extent to which lives have been lost. Absolutely. It is okay to, I mean, RDJ always says, what does not cost life can be replaced. It is, see, it is okay at this point to lose property, but lives 
of Nigerians, that's the one that really gets to me. But let me bring in David today. Yes, um, he's a, an investigative journalist and a broadcaster who works, whose work rather has appeared on CNN, The Report, The African Report, Al Jazeera, and The Washington Post. Um, his work as a satirist on the other news, um, Nigeria's answer to Daily Show has featured in the New Yorker magazine and in Netflix, um, the Netflix documentary, Larry Charles, Dangerous World of Comedy. And as you already know, he's joining us live via Zoom as well. Thank you, David, for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for having me. All right, David, I mean, you seem to have a vast, uh, what's it called? Um, you've done an in-depth work on this particular story that we're talking about. And we're really honored that you, you know, you found the time to talk to us about this. Because I think many Nigerians do not understand the extent as to what has happened with um, Lokoja, Cameroon and Nigeria. Because I hear now that what, whatever flaw that is happening, the story that Lady took about Bielsa, is actually also linked to this same Cameroon um, what's it called, dam release and all the, the flooding that's going on in Lokoja. Maybe you should help us walk us through what exactly is the situation. Okay, so basically there are two major river systems in Nigeria. As you know, the Niger River and the Benue River and the confluence is at Lokoja. So essentially where you have heavy, very heavy rainfalls, um, which tends to happen, as the previous speaker said, approximately once every 10 to 12 years, those river systems tend to become um, flooded. The estuaries tend to become a little bit flooded. Now, what normally should happen is that when the, um, the Lagdo Dam in northeastern Cameroon is open so as to prevent the dam from bursting, as, as happened on September 22 this year, which was the same thing happened in 2012, when that dam is opened, the excess runoff from that dam is supposed to be captured by a dam on the Nigerian side in Adamawa State. That dam is called the Dasin Hausa Dam. Now, when the Lagdo Dam was constructed in Cameroon, it was opened in 1982, there was an agreement that was signed between Nigeria and Cameroon that the Cameroonians had built their own dam, which was supposed to, uh, to generate hydropower for them and to irrigate 15,000 hectares of farmland in Cameroon. So on, on our side of the border in Adamawa, we will then build our own shock absorber dam, which was Dasin Hausa Dam. And it was supposed to it was supposed to irrigate 150,000 hectares of farmland in Adamawa, Benue, and Taraba states, and to add I think 300 megawatts of power to the national grid. Uh, unfortunately, after that agreement was signed, um, a certain Muhammad Buhari came into office in 1983, and as you know, one of the first things he did was that all the development projects going on in Nigeria at the time, he basically halted everything. So that dam basically never got built. Same way the Lagos uh, uh, Urban Metropolitan Rail Project at the time, which was under construction, also got halted for the same reason. Supposedly, he was fighting corruption. So all these develop important development projects got stopped. And the result was that basically 40 years later, that dam has still not been built. It doesn't exist. Now, uh, as recently as 2017, the Minister of Water Resources, uh, Engineer Suleiman Adamu, promised that by 2019, this dam and a few others would have been completed, would have delivered. He said he was speaking to investors. Uh, by 2019, he gave a guarantee that this dam will be complete. Right? Because bear in mind that even though the flooding is very heavy approximately once every 10 years, it doesn't mean that it only happens every 10 years. It actually happens every year. Right? These floods happen every year. They're just not as severe. So they don't get covered in the media usually except they are to this extent, right? So this flooding is a thing that happens every year, every time this dam is opened. But because, you know, the Nigerian government being the, you know, very irresponsible entity that it is, if nobody's talking about it, it just, you know, it's not a priority. So in 2017, he made that promise that by 2019, the dam will be delivered. And this is, what, five years later, and nobody has ever held him to that promise to explain that what exactly happened that you made this guarantee that as a minister, you're going to ensure that this project is delivered and it wasn't delivered till today, we don't know. So as it stands, um, what tends to happen now is that we're basically at the mercy of the Cameroonians. Whenever they, they decide to open the dam, basically, you know, an entire third or, or quarter of Nigeria basically drowns because we are, we are downstream of them. And ultimately, it's not their fault. You can't blame the Cameroonians because... In the most recent, um, the, the most recent time they opened the dam, for example, on September 22, the uh, the company that operates the dam is called the NEO Cameroon. It's Cameroonian state-owned power company. They said that the Lagdo Reservoir 
had hit 91% of its design capacity. So basically, if they had allowed the dam to fill any longer without opening it, it would have burst. The water would have burst the dam. And then what we would have had is not flooding. What we would have had would have been a tidal wave Tsunami. of flood waters moving at hundreds of kilometers per hour. And you know the amount of damage that would have cost. caused. Yes. You know, currently we say we have about 600 dead, according to the official figures. We might be talking about thousands, if not tens of thousands, if the Cameroonians hadn't opened the dam. So really, the only long-term solution here is to ensure that that Dacin Hausa Dam gets built. Because... You know, there's a lot of talk about how um, people build on uh, in floodplains, people build on waterways, and yada, yada, yada. But the truth is that that part of Nigeria is already so heavily populated that where on earth do you want to relocate everybody to? Mm. And by the way, Nigeria is not the only country in the world where people live in places which are floodplains or which are flood prone. Approximately 26% of the Netherlands is below sea level, for example. And as far back as the 17th century, the Dutch had figured out engineering solutions to keep their land dry. So I don't see why in the 21st century it's such an undertaking to build a simple dam that all of a sudden, you know, it's everybody and everything else is responsible and to blame except the Nigerian government. So the Nigerian government has blamed everything except its own failure to build the Dacian House Dam. It has blamed climate change, which is a very convenient bogeyman, which can't be pinned down to anybody because climate change is everybody's fault and hence it's nobody's fault. Uh, they have blamed Nigerians themselves for building on, on waterways, you know, supposedly, even though no data has been presented to explain exactly how Nigerians have supposedly built on waterways, you know, at that kind of scale. They have blamed uh, 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 wrong uh, disposal of, of, of uh, plastics, mm -hmm. things like that, that block drainages. And the truth is that these are all just excuses. The main cause of the flooding is that this dam has not been constructed. Yes, there have been heavier than normal rains this year. And yes, there was always going to be some level of flash flooding, especially on uh, uh, along the Niger River estuary. That was always going to happen, but not to this extent. The reason it has become this severe is because all that runoff water coming from Lagdo in Cameroon has nowhere to go. Mm. And it's not being properly channeled, which is what the dam was supposed to do. So the Nigerian government you know, really needs to prioritize this thing so that we don't end up maybe sometime in 2031 or 2032 having this conversation all over again. Because in 2012, this conversation almost exactly like this happened. It was almost the exact same situation in 2012. Like half of Lokoja was underwater. They were, you were seeing crocodiles, you know, swimming along the streets. You know, people were drowning. It was just like this. And 10 years later, it's the exact same thing. Nothing has changed. So I think the that which is why I'm happy that um, unlike a lot of the discussions in the Nigerian media, which have been, in my opinion, have been very misguided, this conversation this night has been sort of focused on the actual issue, which is the failure of the Nigerian government to build that critical piece of infrastructure so that we can stop letting them off the hook, mm -hmm. so that we can focus on the actual issue and stop shadow boxing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um... <laughs> Should we let Mary this. come in at this point, or? I mean, you you go go. I'm, I'm, I'm speechless to be honest because okay. ten years. Mm. I believe it's uh, one party that has been in, that has been ruling for these ten years, and still, are we going to vote them in again? That's mm. the question of the day. For me, what I'd like to ask is, since we have warnings and we have history, we have meteorologists that tell us about things. It's not just the dam that we didn't build. It's the fact that we knew that we tend to have heavy rains. Even in Lagos, we've had heavy rains where people were bringing out canoes and canoodling yeah. in town and everything. So we're not even where they are. And we've had that issue. And we know all the time that we talk about July rains. Come July next year again, same, same thing, thing would happen. They don't think about it as anything important that they should pay attention to. Then you've heard us say on the show, Many times when they say they are pumping money towards Asorok's Wi-Fi installation, they are pumping money towards causes that don't make sense, that don't serve the community, that don't serve the people. We have a whole community of people displaced, children drowning, lives caught short, and nobody wants to take the blame for it. And then the presidential candidates that want us to vote are having dinner in Paris and cracking jokes. So what's your question? No, I don't have a question, David. Uh -huh. At this point in time, I have a statement. 
Where is the love for humanity? Hmm. Okay. That's a question. David, you want to come in? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, David. Are you there? So, I mean, this, this goes to the heart of what I think is one of the biggest issues with governance in Nigeria. And it's that um, those in power don't really see themselves as public servants, per se. They see themselves as rulers. So if you see yourself as a public servant, as somebody whose job is to work for the public, you understand that your KPIs in that job are to do things that make the life of the public easier. Your KPIs in that job is not yourself, your personal self-aggrandizement. But that's the problem with the, with, with the Nigerian system of governance. I, I, I have a theory that when the, the colonial administration left, the structure of governance in Nigeria did not fundamentally change. So instead of external, an external colonizing force, we have an internal colonizing force which works the exact same way. The structures of power are the same. The system is the same. It's built for exploitation of people instead of service to people. Because if it's not that, then I don't understand why in a situation like this, the government doesn't even see what is happening right now as a scandal. Because truth be told, if this were to happen in you know the places that we think of as, as model democracies, Governments have come down for less than this. Yes. You know, so currently in the UK, there's a, the UK Prime Minister, Liz Truce, is currently going through this whole situation where she might be, she might be removed soon. Why? Because she, uh, she put out a, a mini budget, which basically didn't work out, and it led to some financial market crisis, and she had to reverse it. Exactly. If that was in Nigeria, that would, that, I'm not sure that would even make headlines. Right, but because it's 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 a place where you are actually supposed you have KPIs that are measured in terms of service to people. She can actually lose her job for this. But in Nigeria, you have a situation where six hundred people, at least six hundred people and counting, have died as a result of a completely avoidable situation like this. And then instead, you have the Nigerian government sending sending out its proxies on social media and elsewhere to spread disinformation and to tell people that, no, it's somehow it's, it's Cameroon's fault, mm. that uh, 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 the Cameroon is some kind of aggressing entity, that they opened their dam, as if it's something they did with the intention of drowning Nigeria or something. Mm. Like, and they know that, obviously, people don't know any better. So that kind of narrative will fly. I feel as if that's one of the biggest problems with governance in Nigeria. It's not built for service. It's built for exploitation. So... How is that problem going to be solved? Well, it's Nigerians themselves that are going to answer that question, not me. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, I'll take a question from uh, Mary and Alera. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the flooding in Lokoja and we have with us David Hunei. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Um, so, David, I, I want to come in, then I'll come to you, Mary, because I think uh, you have a question. Um, Currently, we know that Nigeria as a country, apart from the work, the extensive work that was his name, Elrufai did when he was a minister in the FCT, right? Where he remodeled Abuja. Um, I can comfortably say that most states are not structured for eventualities like flooding, right? I mean, take for instance, even in Lagos State, if any little thing should happen today, I think the entire part of, most parts of Lagos State will be submerged in water as well. Yep. So it is not unique to Lokoja, right? So if we want to find lasting solutions to some of this problem, right? How do we begin to approach infrastructure in Nigeria? What are the things that government and the people also would look out for from this government? Because you see, it's one thing for us to talk about things. Yes, there was an ill preparedness, right? I mean, 10 years, they gave you people um, 10 years upfront. You know that every 10 year, um, there would always be an offloading, right? It's just like the one that happens in Arepo between, you know, the one that happens between uh, um, um, Ogun State and Lagos State at the Arepo axis. It's the same thing, mm -hmm. right? When they have to release their dam. So if we want to approach infrastructure, what, are, what, what should we start to look out for? Because this is not unique to Lokoja. If anything should happen tomorrow that has to do with maybe excessive or ex um, extensive rain, we, most parts of Nigeria will be, will be submerged in water, right? So 
how do we begin to look at infrastructure as a country i mean let's let's look beyond politics right now right there is a big problem we do not know how to build people just pick up lands and they just go and build and that's why you can hear a government official not happening on that and trying to use that as an excuse for their failure mm. right because we cannot also look away from that fact that we have people that go and they just go and build where they're not supposed to build so how do we begin to approach infrastructure because there was a time that even fashion law had to demolish homes right and we also came at them and said no 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 you can't do this you know you can't do that so how do we move forward so the thing with that is yes fashion law demolished homes and yes you know uh, uh, governor wiki in, in river state does something similar and yes everybody did something similar as fct minister but in the first place how did those buildings, those structures get to be there. People don't just get to, you know, carry blocks and cement and start building where they see fit. That's not how it works. If you are to try that, your building will get demolished yesterday. There is always some form of permission. It is the government itself that allows its own urban planning regulations to be flouted because people can, can you know, can go through the back door, people can pay bribes. And I know this for a fact, my dad worked in LSDPC during his civil service career. Lagos State, for example, because I can speak for Lagos, and maybe I can't speak for the rest of the country, but I can definitely speak for Lagos. Lagos has one of the best um, urban design master plans in Nigeria, if not the best, right? And I know this because the man worked on it personally. There, so a lot of the infrastructure which is being touted today that this is planned, uh, blue, uh, blue, uh, blue line, of Lagos Rail, red line, you know, these things were planned 40, 50 years ago, right? The problem is that the government itself allows its own master plan to be violated. Mm. Right? So you want to build in a place that is restricted. You are not supposed to be able to build here. You can go to the Ministry of Lands or to LSDPC or Department of Urban Planning or whatever. You have a connection there. You pass a few million naira under the table and you get anything done. So for like, have you ever wondered, for example, how it is that you have some areas in Lagos which are obviously supposed to be residential areas. And then you have, like, businesses cited there. Like, mm. you know, industrial places cited yeah. in residential areas. How did that come to be? Mm. People didn't just go and cite their factory in a residential neighborhood. That's not how it works. Because there are zoning laws. So you, you have to go to the LSDPC or somewhere and pay money under the table to get permission to build stuff where you are not supposed to be able to build it. And that's a microcosm of what happens across the urban planning uh, scene in, in Lagos and across Nigeria. People, obviously, um, they do violate the law, but the government itself is party to it, right? So it's very, it's, it's very dishonest for the government to then come and present itself as if it has no idea how this happened, that Nigerians are just so you know so lawless and the government is an innocent party in all of this and you know it's nigeria's fault no the government was an active participant in this civil servants are active participants in breaking the law in nigeria and i know this because i've seen it firsthand right like a lot of my dad's career uh, a lot of the the pushback and the conflict he faced during his time in civil service was built on that basic issue of you, will you play ball or will you not play ball? Mm. Because that's how civil servants make money. It's not from their salary. How much do they get paid? Mm. But if you know you're a civil servant, you're in the Ministry of Lands or an LSDPC or whatever, your official salary is maybe 180000 naira a month or something. But you want to live the good life, which obviously you can't live on that kind of income. That's how you do it. That's how you make the money. So the government is a, is a full and active participant in this. And everybody knows this up to and including the politicians, the governors, the ministers. They know. So if the Nigerian government decides to start enforcing its own laws in the first place, we wouldn't, we wouldn't even be having this conversation, right? So the, and by the way, these, um, these violations of these laws, they, they never stopped. They still continue to this day. Mm. To this day, if you want to, let me give you a, a very practical like, example of this. So um, the, the place you know as Parkview Estates in Lagos, in Ikoi, Parkview Estate technically is an illegal development. Yes. It shouldn't exist, right? It's essentially marshland. It's supposed to be basically when when it rains, that's the place where Ikoi is supposed to drain into. 
it's not so it was never supposed to be developed according to the master plan of lagos <laughs> and i know it's because i've seen that master plan with my own two eyes and yet somebody gave permission to a developer to go sand fill a place that was marshland that was meant to be a drain basin somebody gave them permission someone in government did that and that place is now some of the most expensive real estate in Lagos. You have property worth billions of naira there now. And now, every time it rains in Ikoi, the water has nowhere to go to. The entire, the whole of Ikoi disappears under a foot of water. That is how come. So are they going to enforce their laws? Are they going to demolish Park Q estate? Obviously, they're not going to. But then they will then find a convenient scapegoat to blame. That, oh, it's somebody who threw pure water, uh, uh, <laughs> they, they threw pure water back into the drain. Or it's somebody in, it's always somewhere in Ijora or somewhere. That's where they go and demolish houses. They don't go to Ikoi and demolish houses mm. there. Even though those guys are also breaking the law. So I, I think the Nigerian government needs to sort of come clean. Right? That, look, we are, we are all lawbreakers. We've all broken the law to, to one extent or the other because Nigeria has been a free-for-all for 30 or 40 years. So now that this is the case, and obviously we cannot go around destroying billions of naira worth of property now, that Rubicon has already been crossed. So we need to find another solution, mm. an engineering solution for this now, build around what we already have now. Mm. Absolutely. And that engineering solution is going to be expensive. But let's take very expensive. <laughs> and to take, it will take a long time to, to actually get done. Like a really long time. And by then, how many people would have lost their lives out of being displaced or not even having food to eat? Mm. It's really a scary situation. It's just as if in this country we are moving from one problem to the other. Like one problem that is that's been hiding will resurface. Maybe next month another one will resurface again. And hopefully this would help all Nigerians to open their eyes and be very angry. I'm so happy that a lot of people are getting so involved now. And God has a reason why this is happening. It's so sad that it's affecting, you know, people are losing their lives to this. But this incident is making a lot of people pay attention to understand that, hey, guys, let us not joke next year. Because it is the, the things our, fa our fathers and our forefathers refused to do that is causing all of these things now. I'm saying, well, they are doing it for their children. Which children? The children that are dying now. Mm. It's ridiculous. You can see what see now. See Nepal <laughs> too. I'm showing Pepe. <laughs> This is what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but, but hey, all right, let's take That's over. So funny. <laughs> the really? flood in Lokoja, Kogi State, is really underreported. Imagine the number of people this rendered homeless overnight. This is sad and heartbreaking. My heart goes out to all those affected by this flood in Lokoja, Kogi State. I pray you get help fast. In the same vein, we pray for Pakistan and Florida that let God arrest the flooding situation too in those countries. The flood has taken many parts of countries though. Government need to be proactive to prevent further occurrence. Bobby Kennedy, Jalingo, Taraba. Thank you. Mary, you have some comments. Okay. Um, I have no evidence of any agreement with Cameroon to build any dam. The dam the minister was talking about to be completed is Kashibila Dam which has been completed and is generating 40 megawatts of electricity. The Lado Dam in Cameroon contributes only 1% of the flooding in Nigeria. This is the fact. Hmm, interesting. Who's this? Go ahead. I, is I the one, is, go ahead. Is the second one? It's the same person. <laughs> oh, okay. The agreement with Cameroon is to inform Nigeria whenever they want to release the water. They release the water 24 hours before informing Nigeria. And for the and for correction, the government sending sending this just seven years in government, not ten years. Okay, this so person not, seems very funny. No, he's a he's a pro Buari government. But David, yes. I wanted you to respond to what the person had said. Mm -hmm. You know about the first part that uh, Mary took. I don't know if you got that part where he said yeah. that there was no such agreement the dam for has the been dam. Built. There absolutely was an agreement. So, like, and again, I don't like it when people come on air and just tell lies. There absolutely was such an agreement, first of all. And then secondly, he said, oh, that uh, the the dam the minister was talking about wasn't the Dasin Hausa dam. It was the Kashimbila dam. Um, excuse me, you can Google it. This was a statement made by engineer Suleiman Adamu in 2017 when he was giving, when he was delivering his scorecard to the Senate. You can Google it. It's on the nation. It's a, this, it was reported widely. You can Google it. I didn't make this up. So I, I'm not sure why people just come on air and just decide to tell lies as if we don't live in the internet age. You can Google these things. Mm. 
And he then goes on to say, if information was released to various state governors since March of this uh, year, nothing was done by the state governors on the issue of the flooding. Now, when he's saying that this government, for correction, the government sending uh, uh, is just seven years in, right? Not ten years. It, it, I mean, is that what we're talking about? Does it even matter? <laughs> is that what we're talking about? Is it seven or ten years that we're talking about? They say, Alera, please, Le Alera, before you talk, because I'm boiling, I don't know the man's name, <laughs> and I would need to find out. It's not about the seven or ten years. So stop talking about semantics and arithmetic that you're probably not even thinking properly. They say there's a problem. Your fellow citizens are being drowned. Generations of them, fourth, fifth, third, they're being drowned in this our very Nigeria that we're all sitting comfortably in front of a camera talking to you and you are talking about whether it's seven or ten okay. years and okay even if Cameroon told you within 24 hours assuming they did something wrong what measures did you have to evacuate those people within that 24 hours that they did something wrong so that the lives that were lost were not as many or lives were not even lost at all why don't you answer that? It even took international news bodies like, to, carry to call it attention to it before we could pay attention to it. Al Haba. That's sad. Alera, I'll take your comment and I'll, I'll go back to David. Yeah, um, so we have a comment. So the Kogi flood and other riverine areas are, are unfortunate. However, the unregulated expansion of settlements by governments also play a role. When a dam is built, it holds back water in the, in the upper tra um, tract of the river. The river below the dam shrinks by the bank. Um, people now expand their settlement over years to occupy an exposed river bed. When the dam gates are open to um, in future um, in future due to high rain and on upriver, this now floods the um, upland development on the formerly exposed uh, bank. This is the main cause of the flood from Open Dam and Cameroon and Upper, and upper River Niger. This is from Ufoma. I mean, honestly speaking, eh, I'm really really feeling for the people that this has affected, and I'm I'm happy that Nigerians are getting angrier. Like this, this part is really making me more excited because it's, it's something has to happen. Well, our eyes has to. You cannot say it's Cameroon that is the reason for what you're not counting. Uh, no, it's not ten years, it's seven years. What does that matter? A lot of people have died, and more people will still die if nothing has happened. They haven't called for an evacuation. If it's the civilians that are busy, you know, a lot of people have, have actually been asking people to donate so that people can send food to people. There, people are starving. Like I don't know when. You know, people will pay attention to this thing. Oh, hopefully, maybe our answer is in 2023, and we are really hopeful that that is what's going but to save Nigeria. But David, it will take a while. Absolutely. But I want to quickly go back to David, right? When they say that after this water settles, we then go back to the same houses that were submerged in water, are we not also part of the problem? Or how do we begin to educate people? Or how do we move away from that? Because that also is a problem in itself give them plants well i mean except you have a solution for relocating i don't know how many million people say 1.2 million people have been displaced so except someone has a solution for relocating those people i don't think that's a problem that you and i can solve i think that's a problem that can be solved only at government level so then it's then a question of is the government willing to make that kind of investment does the government even have that kind of money mm. to make that kind of Absolutely. And ultimately, I think the 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 long-lasting solution is just to build that dam and any other dam along that estuary that needs to be built. Because it just solves so many problems. As I said earlier, Nigeria is not the only place in the world where people have built or settled in low-lying regions or in, or in floodplains. 26% of the Netherlands is below sea level. You can Google this. I'm, I'm not making this up. So if other people have found engineering solutions so that they don't have to like, completely upend their lives every few years. I don't see why it's such a technological feat, insurmountable technological feat for Nigeria to build a couple of dams. I mean, if Cameroon could build a dam in 1982, why can't Nigeria build a dam in 2022? It's, mm. Cameroon is not a wealthier country than Nigeria. I wonder. Cameroon is not a, it's not, does not have more technical capacity than Nigeria, as far as I know. So why is it so difficult? Is it because maybe a dam is 
a dam is not a visually spectacular project that people will see and say, oh, the, the government is working or something. Like, <laughs> is that the issue? That might be. Mm. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Flooding in Lokoja, it is so sad that we're still talking about flooding in Nigeria, especially Lokoja. It is a terrible nightmare when funds are released to stop flooding. They use inferior materials and pockets and pockets uh, already and pockets the remaining funds. That is why flooding will always remain like this. Let us be careful who we vote for next year. It is very important. My name is Daniel Ilo, Ways Regular Fan. So I wanted to quickly touch on drainages, um, David, right? So in all of this part of the conversation, right, we know that most, I mean, Lagos, I say that is the, some of the roads are so horrible. You have a road, there's no drainage. It's just a matter of time the road will go bad. It's the same thing with some of these houses and some of these locations, certainly in Lokoja and all of that. You already know that this is the situation. How do we start to pay attention or start to call the government to to, to really focus on building. You know what really upset me about all of these things, right? When the video broke about the Lokoja flooding, and I saw a video of the first lady of that state driving in a Maybach, 200 million watt of Maybach Mercedes, going to the gym, you know? Like, that for me was the height of it all. Like, do these people even care? They don't. To understand that this is so, so insensitive. People are dying. People have been displaced. People do not have... And you took a 200 million watt of car that you were going to the gym and you did a video and posted it online. Like, I am the speechless. Audacity for me. The audacity. Right? So, drainage, because even dam is one hand. Yeah. We do not pay attention to drainages in this country. You see people build really beautiful roads, no drainage to if there's any rain or whatever. So how do we even start to become a God. lot more conscious? So when a government is building a road, we can stop them. Stop this road, please. Go and do the drainage first before you come back and do the road. How do we start that? Because we have to be very proactive as the citizens and hold these people to account. And lynch them. <laughs> so I, I, I completely like that, that it behooves on us to be a bit more proactive, to... Um, to be almost militant in our role as citizen watchdogs, because clearly when you are presented with the, the kind of governing culture where, as you mentioned, the, the first lady of a state, well, she's not the first, there is no such office as first lady of a state, but the wife of the governor of a state is driving around in a Maybach while half of the state is underwater. And the optics of it don't even make any kind of impact on this person. When you are confronted with that kind of governing culture, I think it's then up to the citizens to become a bit more militant in how they police their elected leaders or representatives. Yeah. So as you said, when um, basic infrastructure like roads are being constructed, I think one of the one of the things that I absolutely detest the most about Nigerian public culture is that when like a governor is is uh, has awarded a contract to build a road, I won't say he built a road because he didn't build a road; he just awarded a contract. Mm. And it's not his personal money, it's state money. So he awarded a state contract to build the road. And then the road is being built to whatever quality standard or whatever. It's not, it's not even important. You get people applauding, like, wow, he's building roads, he's building a school, he's building a hospital. Wow. And meanwhile, it's not his personal money. It's your money. He shouldn't be applauded for it. He should be policed. He should be, what you should be more concerned about is this thing that is building, how useful is it to me? What quality standard is it being done to? How long is this thing going to last? How much utility is it going to add to my life in, in the future? There, um, back in, I think, around the 2013, 2014 period when I had just come back to Nigeria, there was a, there's a website that I used to be a very, very frequent um, visitor on. It was called the uh, Skyscraper City. Now, it's like, a, it's like an infrastructure slash, uh, slash development forum. And on the West African... Um, side of of, West, of, of of Skyscraper City, the Nigerian Forum, there were a few of us who were active posters there. And what we used to do was we used to track projects, basically. We used to visually track projects. So there were a few of us who were just like regular citizens. There were civil engineers. There were all sorts of engineers on the platform as well. So basically all we used to do was just track projects, track project delivery, track quality, share images. It was a very like highly informative forum. But the problem is that there were just too few of us. I think in total, maybe there were about 200 of us who were active 
participants on that forum. So if 200 people are trying to hold the government accountable mm. and there are 20 million people out there who can't be bothered, the government can just ignore you because yeah. your voices are just aren't loud enough. So I think if there are more people who are more interested in things like that, if there are more people who are regular um, uh, contributors on forums like Skyscraper City, where you can actually track projects in real time, where it's not like how it usually happens in Nigeria, where it, let's say a real line is being constructed and it, it got the spokesperson or whatever will come out and tell you a lie, that, oh, we're at 85% completion, the project will be delivered by so-and-so month. On, if you're on that forum and you're talking to actual engineers and people who are on the ground so they and know. you are analyzing satellites, footage mm. and you know live visuals you can already tell Absolutely. this is true this is not true mm -hmm. that sort of citizen watchdog thing that's what we need more of I, i'm not sure that we, we do enough of that mm. oh my god mm. and unfortunately we have run out of time but thank you so much david we'll keep on talking about these things because we will we don't have work this is the only work that we have. Our work is to keep on saying the right things. Oh, wow. It's true. I don't have work. Oh. This one is to keep on saying the right things it's and driving the conversations it that will get you thinking, that will provoke your thoughts and push you to actions, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, David Hodeni. Thank you, um, Ilero, Mary, and Lady. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further. Drop a comment and most importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, here it is again. I like this quote so much. <laughs> Even though some flood is also man-made. Floods are acts of God, but flood losses are largely acts of man. Right? The losses that you experience on flood are actually acts of man. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.